Can we talk about the song Moving Out? Yeah. Uh, also called Anthony's song. Why is it also called Anthony's song? I don't know why I subtitled it. I, at the time, it, I just pictured some lady yelling out of a house, Anthony, Anthony. Um, and the, the character that starts in the first verse is named Anthony, so I thought it was a good theme for Anthony. Uh, but the, the title is moving out. Is that the way you start most songs, by hearing a line? I actually start most songs with music. I, I write the lyrics after the music has been written, a melody, a chord pattern, and a rhythm. And then I try to decode what is in the music. What is the music saying? What was the motivation for writing that music? What's the emotion? But you started with Anthony. Now, this is one of many songs that are story songs, but they're also idea songs. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what's, the, the, what's the, the main idea driving moving out? I'm just thinking about a kid who's, who's been living at home and is getting a lot of pressure from his family to uh, uh, do what they want him to do. And I, this is a guy who wants to go his own way. And it's, I, I don't buy into uh, the upward mobility. I don't buy into the fact that I got to work in this store and stack stuff on the shelves until I can start you know, taking over the, the operation of the shop. I want to get out of here. I'm moving out. You talk about your childhood. Uh, what was it like? Uh, a lot of music being played in the house, uh, mostly classical music when I was a kid. Uh, Broadway musicals, um, a lot of you know, pop music from New York radio that we could hear uh, in where I grew up. It was only uh, a few miles outside of New York City. Um, father played the piano. Uh, my mother would sing in uh, Gilbert and Sullivan operettas. That's where my parents met. It was a Jewish family, although I wasn't brought up with any religious upbringing. I used to go to Mass because all my friends were Catholic. I thought that's what you did on a Sunday. You went to Mass. That's what everybody did. Um, so interesting mix of things. We had a piano in the house. It wasn't a grand piano. It was an old beat-up Lester upright piano. Terrible piano. Half the keys didn't work. But I would go over and play the piano when I was a little boy. I'd go bang, bang, bang. Here's the thunder. Bing, bing, bing. Here's the lightning. And my mother after four years said, enough with the storm song, you're going to have to learn how to play right. And she dragged me down the street to the piano teacher. Uh, and that's where I started playing the piano, uh, you know, formally. Did you like the piano so much that quite early on you thought, this is where I want to make a career around the piano, around music? Yeah, I, I fell in love with music at an early age. And um, when I started to be able to pick out pieces by ear, it wasn't so much from reading uh, the, uh, the uh, books uh, of uh, Clementi and Mozart, and it was when I discovered I could figure this stuff out by ear that I became just enchanted with this. I love this. I mean, there's a, there's a wizardry to it. There's a kind of a sorcery to the manipulation of sound. I mean, I was just a little guy. I wasn't a real social butterfly. I'd be at somebody's house, and I'd kind of wander over and play the piano, and it enchanted other people. Um, and when I came of age and started liking girls, I realized this is better than a sports car, you know? I'd play the piano and then I'd look up, there's a girl, I'd play a little more and there's another girl. I said, this is great. Uh, and recognize the, the, the power that's inherent in music. Back into the Stranger album for a moment or two with, uh, she's always a woman about, uh, about falling in love with a woman both for a, flaws and for a beauty. And again, I think the opening lines just so easily lead us in. She can kill with a smile, she can wound with her eyes, just taking us in very gently, just pulling us into the story. Well, I wanted to start with a series of paradoxes. Yeah. You know, that, that's, she's always a woman, it's interesting because I've been accused of being a misogynist for writing that song. There's a very simple explanation of what the song is about. There's one guy saying to another guy, well, she's this to you, she's that to you, she's this to you, she's that, but she's always a woman to me. Um, it's about a dialogue between one man and another man. Well, you can say she's this and you can say she's that, but she's always a woman to me. And um, for all the, uh, the perception that there's a negativity about the woman, um, what I'm saying is you can accuse her of this and you can accuse her of that, but I don't have that problem with her. That's just the essence of the song. 
She's always a woman to me. Do you think that by talking directly from your own experience or your experience of other people's lives whom you know well, you, looking back now or looking, on, looking at it, you are thereby tapping into common experience? I suppose I am. I'm not really aware when I'm writing that this is something that's going to resonate with people. Um, I, I wouldn't even know if a song is going to be a hit. I don't try to sit down and write a hit record. I write songs for me. I don't think about the record company, I don't think about the radio, I don't think about critics, I definitely don't think about an audience. I have no idea what people are going to like. I don't lump an audience in as a monolithic thing. They're just individual people who all come to see me. I write for me. I write for my own amusement. I write, what do I want to hear? In a, lot of, in a lot of ways I was trying to recreate Beatle music. When the Beatles broke up, I said, oh, we're not going to get any of that anymore. Maybe I can try to do something like that. Um, so it was always a, for me. That may sound selfish, but I'm the only person I know how to please, really. If we go to uh, Uptown Girl, you'd been divorced from your first wife when you wrote that, as I understand it, and so you were, a, as it were, a single man. Did it come out of the experience of a single man? Yeah, I was newly divorced, and here I was, a rock and roll star, and I was dating these women that I never could have dreamed I could have dated. I was dating Elle McPherson, I was dating Christy Brinkley, uh, I was going out with these models and, you know, it's like a guy's dream. I, how did I get here? But I was sure having a good time. Um, how did you get that, do you think? Was it the piano and your... It was the piano. Yeah. I actually met both Christy and Elle at the same moment. I was in a, on a Caribbean island, first vacation I ever took. I went to this little club, uh, it was like a bar, and there was a piano, and I, I just looked and I started playing the piano. I looked up and it, there is Christy Brinkley and Elle McPherson at the same moment leaning over the piano. And I just looked back down at the piano and said, thank you, man. <laughs> thank you. And I started writing this song. It's written kind of tongue in cheek. It was an homage to Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons um, who wrote a song called Rag Doll. That was the reverse. It was about a, a, a girl from the wrong side of the tracks and he was from a rich family. So I kind of flipped it around and I made it, I'm the downtown guy and she's the uptown girl. And it's kind of a, I don't want to say a joke, but it's an homage to that kind of writing. I mean, listen, the words are kind of silly. When my ship comes in, then I'll win. It's not the greatest lyric ever, but it was written as, as a fun thing. Do you still hope that sometimes the sort of it shall come to write another song? Well, I write all the time. I just don't write songs. I write music. I write um, thematic music. I write fragments of what could be symphonic music or um, could, it could end up being a movie soundtrack. Maybe some of them can end up being songs. I don't know. But really, what's important to me is that I'm just writing. Not necessarily that I'm publishing it or publicizing it or recording it, but that I'm writing. And it's the, music, the music is coming out. You see, this is in, this, in, a, in one way of sort of picking up a, a stitch from childhood that you yeah. left for. Yeah, I, I refer to this as the, um, the girl next door. Classical music was always the nice, um, friendly, sunny girl from next door. And rock and roll was this girl who smoked cigarettes and torn fishnet stockings with smeared mascara who dragged me away and seduced me. And we had a wild flaming affair for 35 years, mm -hmm. 40 years. And all of a sudden, I rediscovered the girl next door and said, oh, she's not bad. And I kind of fell in love with her again. You know, classical music is, is really where my heart is now. Although I'll, I'll always love rock and roll.